All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So I wanted to touch on a couple topics that happened recently um, in fitness and bodybuilding news. The first topic I want to talk about um, is unfortunately a world champion arm wrestler recently passed away in a tragic car accident. So Andrei Pushkar, who was a Ukrainian arm wrestler, who was a 15-time world champion arm wrestler, a 16-time European champion, and a 7-time World Cup champion, um, competing in 30 different countries and winning a total of 200 various medals uh, from arm wrestling competition. So this guy was one of the leading um, and most accomplished arm wrestlers in the sport. So unfortunately, on November 14th, he was in a freak car accident. Um, and he's actually riding with another championship arm wrestler, Oleg Zok. So Oleg's father was driving the car, according to Ukrainian police reports. So Oleg's father was driving the car. Oleg was the front passenger, um, and I guess Andre was in the back of the car. Um, so apparently what happened was they lost control of the car, swerved into the other lane, and collided with a truck. So of the three total passengers, two of them unfortunately passed away. Oleg's father passed away, um, and Andre also passed away. Um, as far as I know, Oleg is currently in the hospital in stable condition, um, so he did survive. But it's a very sad situation um, because Andre was only 33 years old. These were all young guys. Um, so very tragic incident. Um, it happened a few days ago, but I wanted to wait until all the information was out before I made a video um, covering the facts. Um, so my thoughts and condolences are certainly with the families um, of Andre and Oleg both. It can't be easy um, for either one of them. So the next story is Big Rami working with Neil Hill for the 2019 Olympia season. Now, I did a video on this a couple days ago, um, breaking the news that Rami was going to be working with Neil. And recently, in an interview with RX Muscle, Neil kind of gave a breakdown of what his plans were for Rami um, and what the 2019 competitive season is going to be looking like for Big Rami. In my video, um, I speculated as to whether or not Big Rami would do the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio, because the show he has not done yet. I think it would be a big show for him to win. Um, and in the interview, Neil said that Rami did express interest in doing that show. Um, but Neil thinks that wouldn't be the right show to do. Um, so as far as the coach is concerned, it doesn't look like Rami is going to be doing the 2019 Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. So that's probably not going to happen. We're probably not going to see him on stage in March. But Neil did say he thought the right show for Rami would be doing the 2019 New York Pro, which is a little bit later on in the year. I believe it's in May. Um, Big Rami apparently does need to re-qualify for the Mr. Olympia in 2019. So his placing this year was not good enough to re-qualify him for next year. So he does need to do a show before the Olympia. Now, that being said, I think the New York Pro is an interesting choice for Big Rami to do um, going into the Olympia because, number one, the New York Pro is Big Rami's pro debut as an IFBB professional bodybuilder back in 2013. That was the first time we saw Big Rami on a pro stage. Obviously, we know he won the 2013 and 2014 New York Pros relatively easily, and that was back when he was first just getting started as a pro. Um, so in my opinion, you know, the goal is to win a pro show and qualify for the Olympia. Obviously, they're setting out to win a show. That's what they have to do to qualify. I think even though this year at the Olympia, Rami didn't look his best, Rami is still a guy that has been a top two guy at the Olympia back in 2017. So I think picking the New York Pro might almost be too easy for Big Rami. Um, and while I would like to see him challenge himself a little bit more and try to go into the 2019 Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio, um, I think, you know, from a game plan perspective, if the main goal is to improve upon the Olympia placing and do well at the Olympia, and they're not so concerned with other shows, from that perspective, I think the New York Pro is a good choice. It's probably going to be an easy win for him. He's certainly going to be one of the favorites going into that show. Um, typically, the New York Pro isn't the deepest lineup, um, especially when you're talking about a guy that has been runner-up at the Olympia. So it does make sense for him to do that show. I would still really like to see him do the Arnold Classic. But again, if the game plan is to focus on doing better at the Olympia, I can see why they wouldn't do that. Um, but I do think at some point it would be cool to see Rami do the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. It's something he's never competed in. It's a title he's never won. He's won it in other countries, but not the Ohio one. Plus, I don't really know who's going to be in the lineup for the 2019 Arnold Classic. I think that would make it a much more um, exciting lineup. And another thing that Big Rami's coach said in this interview that I found interesting was that he said he was going to be focused on 
bringing down Big Rami's size from a standpoint of bringing him in conditioned. Um, he said he told Rami it's about separation, conditioning, and detail. He said he told Rami, you already have all the size that you need to be competitive on that Olympia stage. You already have all the muscle that you need. Now it's about getting the separation in detail. So it does look like this new coach has the right approach um, to how to bring Rami in um, as far as conditioning is concerned. And this is the main concern I think a lot of people had um, when he's picking a new coach is what is that coach going to be focused on? I think, you know, really you can't really blame the coach completely because Big Rami has had a lot of very accomplished and well-known gurus slash coaches in the industry. Chris Aceto, you had Dennis James, you had George Farah for a period of time. And I think it's probably fair to say that all of these guys, all of these coaches wanted to see Rami come in condition on the Olympia stage. I don't think any of these guys were telling Big Rami he, need, he needed to come in bigger. I think all of them had the same mindset. I think it really comes down to, you know, did Big Rami listen or not? So while I think a lot of people are quick to blame the coach, I think we also need to look at does the athlete follow exactly what the coach is telling them to do? And that's something we're going to find out in 2019. Now, in other news, we have Kai Green. And this news is actually not pertaining to the 2019 Mr. Olympia. This news is pertaining to Kai Green's acting career. So recently we saw Kai Green appear in Stranger Things, and that was the Netflix original series. He had kind of a minor role in those episodes. But Kai Green is actually slated to star in an upcoming movie called Crazy Fist. So Crazy Fist is a Chinese-American co-venture film, um, which I believe is coming out sometime in 2019. Now, the budget for this film is roughly $12 million, um, and it's going to be premiering um, in the international market. So the theatrical release of this film for the Chinese market is scheduled sometime in July of 2019. So the plot of this movie revolves around an MMA champion who swore to never fight again after accidentally killing his opponent, um, but he's being forced back into fighting in order to uncover some kind of major conspiracy. And again, Kai Green is listed as the star of this film or as a star of this film and not so much a minor role like he's had in the past. So could this be, you know, a major breakout role for Kai Green's acting career? It very possibly could. Um, and the reason why this is important in the news is while people are speculating whether or not Kai Green would come back to the 2019 Mr. Olympia, you've got to also take into consideration the possibility um, of him being in this movie this movie um, supposedly coming out before the Olympia in 2019. If this movie really takes off and really does well, and Kai Green makes a ton of money, becomes very, very popular, um, and even more famous than he is already, we could see a scenario where Kai Green doesn't need to do the Olympia. If Kai Green makes a ton of money off this movie, he could realize, okay, there's really no point in me competing in professional bodybuilding to get you know, $400,000 or whatever they're giving to the winner of the Mr. Olympia. Um, you know, that's really chump change compared to what you could possibly make from a blockbuster movie, um, especially in these Chinese markets. Now, finally, I wanted to talk about the movie Bigger. Now, I've seen a couple people talking about the fact that, you know, they couldn't find a theater that was playing this movie. Bigger, obviously, is the movie um, about the story of Joe Weider um, and how he started you know, the bodybuilding organization that he started, it obviously has Callum Von Moger playing the role of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and a lot of people are talking about the fact that they could not see this movie. Um, and some people are talking about the fact that the movie, in a way, flopped. Um, the opening weekend of this movie, according to Box Office Mojo, made about $31,000. And the budget for this movie was supposedly a multi-million dollar budget. Um, so making, you know, 30 grand in the first weekend is a pretty disappointing opening weekend. But granted, it was a pretty limited debut. Um, it only debuted in 61 theaters, averaging $500, roughly $500 per theater. Um, so 61 theaters nationwide is a very, very limited opening. And what this tells me is, I think the goal of this movie was not so much to do well in the box office. The goal of this movie was to be a streaming hit. I think what we're going to see in the future um, is bigger appearing on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime. Um, and, and this movie is going to strike some kind of deal with one of these streaming services. And that's where they intend to make their money back. If they really wanted to be you know, a major box office hit, I think they would have been in a lot more theaters than that. Um, I think the 61 theater thing was kind of a telltale sign of them always having the plan of maybe some kind of streaming deal for this movie because maybe they knew... A movie about kind of a very niche 
you know, a niche sport like bodybuilding would have kind of a limited viewership that might not go, you know, go out and actually see it in a theater. I wanted to go out and see it in a theater, but it wasn't playing in any theater anywhere near me. I mean, the nearest one was maybe six or seven hours away. So I haven't even seen the movie yet. Um, and I posted up, you know, the trailer for the movie on my channel. So according to Box Office Mojo, as of right now, the movie has made $46,382. That's their total domestic gross. Um, and they had a pretty star-studded cast here. They had Julianne Huff, Victoria Justice, Tom Arnold was involved, DJ Qualls was involved, Kevin Durand. Um, so there were some pretty big-name actors in this. And I'd be willing to bet each and every single one of those actors was expecting more than forty-six grand for each of them to appear in the movie. So time will tell what happens, but I'm, I'm fairly certain we're going to see some kind of streaming deal with Bigger like we've seen with Generation Iron. Generation Iron has done very well, actually, on Netflix. Um, a lot of my friends that aren't even into bodybuilding have seen Generation Iron and the Ronnie Coleman documentary and all that stuff that they put on Netflix because it appeared and they're recommended on Netflix. And they're really not even interested in that kind of stuff, but they found it interesting because it was promoted um, through Netflix. So that is the news for the week, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy this style of video. Once a week, I kind of want to do a longer video like this covering topics that might not be enough for their own individual video um, and just covering a couple of different topics in one video and kind of a weekly wrap up news style video like this. So if you enjoyed this style of video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to continue um, posting the daily shorter style videos, but once a week, I kind of want to do a video like this. So thank you guys for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.